Hey guys, it's a beautiful day. We're in Little Corona. It's a wonderful little beach right down there with these beautiful rocks, kind of a Mediterranean feel. Southern California, just a beautiful day. And we're looking at a gorgeous bike. This is the Blue Jay Premier Edition. And I believe it's the only bike that they make. This company is owned by a woman. And a lot of the accents and, and just the attention to detail here really pops for me. We're looking at the black and tan, but they have a bunch of different colors. And we've got like some pastel, softer, just, you know, look at the tires. These are kind of the cream colored. But what's interesting to me about this bike is it's not just about style. It's actually very, very functional. And I think there are two frame sizes. As So we're looking at the 20 inch, which is a little bit larger. And these are the black frame. So you and me were out here riding this, yeah. uh, you know, no shame. Fit this, very well. It's very, it's kind of <laughs> classic. It's got that approachability and stuff. This swept back handlebar, kind of a gull wing style adjustable angle, 100 millimeter stem, so you can really, you know, bring it up, kind of that Dutch style, or you can put it forward a little bit if you're taller. This is a mid-step frame, so rather than having one single frame, like extra large tube that can kind of still flex, they went with the triangle design, and, and in that sense, I consider this a mid-step, but it's still very approachable. So if you're a petite person, if you're a lady with a dress or something, you can get on this bike and, and kind of handle it. Really comfortable too. This is a Velo saddle with faux leather stitched and it matches the grips perfectly. To, to me, that was really surprising because a lot of times there's like a little bit of variance. These are even branded. So it's got like the logo and it's got the inner lock ring so they don't twist. This bike, I mean, it's fully loaded. So let's look at the racks. You can take them off if you want to. This bike weighs about 59 and a half pounds as you see here with the pedals, with the racks and everything. That's kind of heavy and that's partially because it does have these full size aluminum alloy fenders. It's got the racks. Just want to hit the specs on these. This is 25 kilogram rated. So you could have panniers on the sides. They could clip right here and you'd still have room for a trunk bag on top. There's enough clearance. You could bring the saddle all the way down and we've got these integrated lights and the light is connected to the rack. So keep that in mind if you decided to take it off, if you felt you weren't going to use it. Um, and it's kind of wired through the fender. So, you know, again, I really don't think too many people are going to take that off. I just want to call, call to your attention that you could, that there is some customization that could be done with this bike. There's even a spot here to mount a frame lock. It's kind of locks the rear wheel. Sometimes those are called cafe locks. You can jump into the cafe and no one can just ride your bike away. Check out the base of this rack. It's got a little bungee loop, so you can put a cord there and kind of lasso something on top. Maybe it's like a milk crate or something if you want to go with the, the college look. And then up front, we've got this basket. It's rated to 10 kilograms, okay? It's about 22 pounds. The rear one, 55 pounds, perfect for if you have like a child seed or something. It's very sturdy, pretty standard. The front, you don't see these a lot. Uh, sometimes you'll see like a basket that's connected to the handlebar or something that's positioned and sort of mounted to the, the fork. But the problem with those is that as you steer, they sort of slosh around. And, and if you park, a lot of times they tip to the side and it can kind of dump the load out. This basket, it's frame mounted. So it's extra sturdy. It sort of follows that double tube design, that mid-step. It's wonderful to see that. I mean, this is a bike that at first glance, I thought, okay, it's just kind of a classic looking city bike with a Bafang motor. What's special about it? And then when we started to look, we yeah. found a lot of things. So tell me about this the headset area here. There's there's some cool features. Yeah, so it's a it's a threaded headset, cartridge bearing style. So, you know, all the elements and stuff from the ocean stay out of it. This is a telescoping uh, actual stem. So this will <laughs> raise up. So, you know, one thing that's really important is getting your fit correct and everything. If you're a bigger guy or shorter, you want to get that customization. Also, the angle moves and it pivots. So I know, love that. Bring it closer or further away. Yeah. Yeah. And with two frame sizes, uh, having all of that adjustability up here is really nice. Tell me about the fork here. Cause this is like the only steel piece of the bike. Exactly. So it's a front fork really gives it a nice planted feel. Yeah, I've heard that steel can dampen some vibration. Exactly. And also with the rake like this, you're you're giving it a longer like length and yes. maybe the wheelbase a Correct. little bit. So it was stable when I was riding with no hands. Very stable. So the other thing that I think adds to the comfort feel is we got these Schwabi balloon tires, Fat Frank. They are 28, that's the diameter of the wheel, by 2.0. So they're a little bit wider. They do have puncture protection, which is great. K-Guard level three, and they have the reflective sidewall stripe. So worth noting is we've got just a standard 100 millimeter hub spacing, nine millimeter axle with quick release. So you can easily take that front wheel off if 
if you need to transport the bike or true the wheel or maybe fix a flat. The rear is a little bit more difficult. I think this is a 15 millimeter nut, 12 millimeter keyed axle, and it sits into this sort of a sliding dropout. And they do that because there are, there's no derailleur. There's no cassette back here. It's just a chain and it's tight. And so that's not gonna be bouncing around, making noise or chipping the frame. Really like that. Uh, but the way they've set this up, 135 millimeter hub spacing with the bolt. So just keep that in mind. I recommend trying to keep those tires within the recommended PSI range. I think it's 30 to 65. I've got all of those specs back at the website. And if you just make sure you're above that 30 uh, PSI, you're less likely to get pinch flats. I love that they've got these eyelets on the rims. That just makes it stronger. You're not gonna crack the rim. And with a bike that is heavier, again, about 60 pounds, it's nice that we've got hydraulic disc brakes. So these are Tektro Vela dual piston, 160 millimeter rotors, front and rear. And then really nice silver. These are, these are beautiful and they're three finger brake lever. So hydraulic left, right, you don't have this friction happening with like a mechanical brake, okay? If you've ever experienced that before, you've got a bike that's like out in the rain, yeah. it starts to creak, it starts to rust. Like Most this definitely. this bike, they're trying to avoid all that. Oh yeah. And these are also adjustable reach. So if you're someone with smaller hands, you can bring the lever in a little bit so you don't have to reach as far. And they're both gonna work consistently. For me, hydraulic disc brakes are great. So, you know, just thinking about the bike, it, it is a little bit heavier, but there's some customization that you can do here. Easy to remove that front rack if you want it to but very fun if you want to put like a, a bag and take your little puppy with you yes i should say the bike does cost a little bit more than bikes that might look like this one and it's really easy to miss all of these little upgrades this is 35.95 yeah but the drivetrain on this bike is really nice but before i get into the details i do want to mention that because of the kickstand placement you can get pedal lock and that happens when you back the bike out of your garage or whatever you've got the kickstand down because it's a tight space you end up locking the pedal and then the bike won't go back please keep that in mind if if you need to you can kind of tip the bike up onto the kickstand and pedal forward a little bit like that and then you can stow it the kickstand itself has a nice big plastic foot it's got plenty of space so that it doesn't sink in as much on soft terrain it's adjustable length and i feel like Maybe they put it at the middle of the frame because we have that front basket. A lot of times I'm seeing bikes with rear mounted kickstands that have a rear rack. So coming back around to the drivetrain itself, we've got a 38 tooth aluminum alloy chain ring with narrow wide tooth pattern. To me, that was that was a real delighter. I, I don't see those on most city bikes and stuff. It's kind of a mountain bike feature, but it really retains the chain. You're, you're not gonna have any drops. On a bike like this, there's no derailleur and the chain is kind of a fixed length. In fact, it's sort of pulled in position by the sliding dropout back here. So it, it almost feels unnecessary, but it is a nicer part. So I'm not gonna complain too much. We do have an aluminum alloy guard as well, and that might protect the bottom bracket if you come into contact with a log or a rock or something. And it just looks really clean. It's, it's just another line, nice little upgrade. Adds a tiny bit of weight, but this is all aluminum alloy, 170 millimeter crank arms, aluminum alloy pedals with a rubber grip so you don't scratch your shins if you slip off and then we have this beautiful paint matched aluminum alloy chain cover so everything again 60 millimeter fenders with the plastic end caps their paint match the fork the baskets everything on this is just just gorgeous so mark what's going on back here with the actual gearing so this is the shimano alfine eight speed hub internally geared cool really great hub and then what was the gear ratio on this 307 percent you can shift it stand still my understanding is that with uh, internally geared hubs like this they tend to require less maintenance and they stay cleaner absolutely yes i i do get the impression that these tend to be more durable they're easier to shift and they just don't get banged up as easily because you don't have the external parts that get dirty and hang down. And this is a mid-drive bike. So even though we do have nuts and like a, an axle back here, we don't have quick release, you're still keeping a lot of the weight of the bike forward, Correct. down, centered. That's exactly what you want. And this is a, it's kind of a multi-sensor system, right? Yeah, so it's torque-based pedal assist sensor. You know, when you're talking about uh, the sensors, I was just seeing this a second ago. Here we have a magnet and here we have a sensor. So we got the rear wheel speed and we've got the pedal torque. And you, you notice that when you're pedaling. Oh yeah. Like oh, yeah. it's not just like start and stop harshly, exactly. it's smooth. Yep. So Mark, what is, there's like a little box right here. Yeah, Can you so tell this me is about an inline this? shift sensor. So this actually 
uh, it feeds off of the actual shifting, so the mechanical cable goes through there, and it has a little strain gauge huh. that measures that minute shifting action. Wow, okay, well, because with such a powerful mid-drive, yes. when we're shifting through those gears, I mean, even though this internally geared hub is pretty sturdy and it can be shifted at standstill, you still don't want to put undue strain on it Correct. With the big motor. The, you know, internally geared hubs are, they have a tendency, the shift gates and stuff, you want to, you, you don't want to shift under load, and so this is automatically pulling power for you. Uh, this is the Bafang M400. It's a 350 watt motor, but apparently it peaks around 700 watts. 80 newton meters of torque is what they say. And really the torque delivery depends on, you know, what level of gear that you've chosen out of those eight. So you can climb efficiently or you can hit and maintain the 20 mile per hour top speed pretty well. This motor is a little bit heavier though. So it's like eight and a half pounds for this versus the battery. I think it's around six and a half pounds. And again, everything combined is about 60 pounds. So I'm gonna insert the key. It's pretty cool that they give you four and then twist that and Mark is pulling it off the side. Just be careful with these pins down here and stuff. We don't wanna bend those. There's the battery pack. It's got a little charge level indicator built right into it so you can get a quick idea. 20% increments, not super precise. And then we've got the little charging port cover. I think, I think I'm doing, yeah, there we go. Really interesting plug design. It's sort of this, I don't know, quad, quad angle. So I call it a USB port looking kind of thing. <laughs> it, is, it kind of is, and it's funny you mentioned USB port because the display has one, and we'll talk about that a little later, but go ahead and I think we can even take the keys out and just kind of click on. One thing that's on. nice that I just noticed is that there's actually some knurling right here, so you can kind of grab with your fingers. Oh yeah. That's a new feature. I, I just actually stumbled upon that. You just kind of set it in and then it clicks right. Look at that. So beautiful. Weight is low in center. A battery that seems fairly open source if you needed to repack it or replace it. Here is the charger. Uh, it has that same unique proprietary plug and it's Philion. I don't know. Two amps. Weighs about 1.6 pounds. I was weighing that earlier. Kind of standard. It's sort of sort of cheap. I mean, there, there are some chargers out there that go a little faster. They're four amp. But they tend to weigh a little bit more and the bikes tend to be even more expensive. So I think that checks the box. It feels like this bike has just about everything. There's tons of, it's 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 purpose built. Yes. Uh, the, the cables are pretty well internally routed, so it's clean. It's feature complete, meaning it has fenders, lights, and racks. Yes. But there's one thing that's missing. Can you can you think? What? Can, do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, the water bottle cage bolts. No water that. bottle cage bolts. Yeah. As a, but Mark says he has a solution. Do you got? You want to show me? So you know what we do, what works really well, because you know honestly, beach cruising, you don't really carry a water bottle with you. You carry a koozie. Oh yeah. And so this keeps your you know whatever beverage cold. You mount it to the handlebar. You mount it to actually you mount it to this telescoping stem and it nicely oh. sits just like right there, you know, ready to roll whenever you are. I was wondering because I, these are curved handlebars and so I was like, how is he gonna come up with something? It's gonna like fit. Oh, by <laughs> the way, look at that, like wow, ship gorgeous. out there. It's like a pirate ship. Oh my gosh, this wow. is such a cool area. I'm it sorry, is. back to the bike, back to the, <laughs> These bikes can take you anywhere, but on a hot day, you don't wanna have water. So but I also wanna recommend for people um, you know, your bottle's gonna be rolling around if it's in that front basket, but if you get the rear trunk bag, some of them have a bottle holster, or you could be a geek like me and wear a backpack with like a hydro hose or something like that. So coming back up to the cockpit, we got this beautiful, huge bell. It's got a really nice chime to it. We got the trigger shifters. There's an optical window so you can determine, you know, which gear out of eight that you have selected. Two-way trigger shifter, okay, so you can push it or pull it, and then a single click low lever, so we're back into the original gear. But again, this is an internally geared hub. It doesn't matter. I can just shift the gears. It's not gonna break anything. That's right, that's like, the beauty of it. That's so nice, you know? Yeah, especially if you're new to shifting or whatever, a little less comfortable. We got the brakes and everything. I mentioned before, no motor inhibitor on the brakes, but that's because this is rear wheel speed and torque sensing. It's gonna stop as soon as you stop pedaling. You got these great hydraulic disc brakes. It's just the shifting and the inline shift detection. For me, that just blows my mind. I was not expecting that. Yep. Okay, so there's that. What what uh, what else might I be missing, Mark? I mean, if we hit everything? Um, you know, I think we. Ha I mean, as you said, feature complete. It's a end to end. It's a really great riding bike. This is 2021 version, so it's you know they've they've iterated upon. How long have they been around, or how many versions? Uh, you know, have they I'm had? not sure, but you know they did have kind of a Gen Gen One. 
funny you should see uh, say that is they actually number all their bikes right here. So this is number 206 if you're the lucky owner of this someday. For people who, you know, we were mentioning how the steel fork gives you some comfort and the higher volume tires are great. But for, for people who want even more comfort, you can get a suspension seat post, uh, 30.4 millimeters if you go for that. You can also get a shim if you can't find this exact size. But keep in mind, if you do that, you're gonna raise the minimum saddle height by about three inches. I've measured everything about this bike, the length, the wheelbase, the standover height, all of that, so you can make some of those determinations. Most importantly too, back to the seat post, I, I do recommend the suspension seat post. Yeah. However, it's black and you can't mismatch this bike. I've come to realize <laughs> over the last two years. SR Suntour has a silver one. <laughs> they got the NCX. That is correct, the NCX. Remember, this is the 20 inch. That's what we're, we're reviewing today and what we have. I, su I suspect that if you get their 17 inch model, maybe you'd get a slightly lower. You do, you do, you but definitely Are the do. wheels the same size, Mark? Wheels are the same if size. If they're 28 inches, keep in mind that's that raises the whole bike up a yes. little bit, so the wheel size does matter. I just love that they have the cream, the tan wheels, like all of the accents are really done well. I've seen a couple other companies in the past try to do these like pretty bikes. Mm -hmm. It's just a lot of them don't get, they don't get the attention to detail on the components, Correct. right? And exactly. I, I really feel like Jen did. Yes. Maybe it's time to jump into the display panel then? Sure. So this is a Bafang display, but it's Blue Jay branded, which is pretty cute. We got the button pad over here. I like that there are a, bu a bunch of like, yeah, kind of independent buttons. You don't have to remember all these secret codes to like turn on the light, okay? It's like dedicated. So if we hold the power button for a second, boots up pretty quickly. Those are all the screens. It flashes them for just a moment. And check this out, 10 bar battery charge level infographic way way cool a lot of times you just have those five bars and that's 20 percent steps it's much nicer to have 10 percent increments just much more precise we have speed there in the middle you can switch from miles per hour to kilometers per hour trip distance and if we press the i button we cycle through some of these different readouts like total distance and max speed average speed and then it kind of loops around 45 miles to go watts I don't, I don't know what OC means, hours, maybe that's ride time. And we started in assist level one. You can turn it completely off and just ride it like a bike with lights if you want to. So I just press the minus button, but keep in mind it's, it starts in assist level one. To turn on the lights, we just hold that light button for a few seconds and then boom, it turns on and the screen becomes backlit. So it's easier to view at night and we can even adjust the backlight brightness. So for people who feel like distracted by the display, but they still want the lights, you can do that. Single LED Spininga Vivo rear light. And it's got a nice big reflective surface. It's protected by the rack. It's gonna stay out of the way of your bags and stuff. Love to see that. And then the headlight up here, this is the Trendo by Spininga. Same thing, it's a single LED, but it's got this nice big housing and it seems like it's adjustable up and down. Really well done. Again, it kind of points where you steer. It's not gonna get blocked by the contents of your rack or anything. Very well thought out on that. If you do want to get into some of the other settings here, well, maybe before we get there, of course we can do plus two, three, four, five. Five is the highest level of assist. And that's gonna use the battery up faster. You're not gonna get quite as great of range. I was estimating like 25 to 50 miles on this. It kind of depends on how you ride, but those mid-drive motors tend to do very well. Again, this is a 48 volt battery, so it's a little bit more powerful and the energy is distributed a little bit more efficiently at the higher voltage. And it's like a 550 watt hour, so slightly above average. It's actually a pretty good battery capacity there. If we come back to this button pad and we double click the eye, we get into the menu. So we can change some of these uh, readouts, like the units, miles to kilometers. We can change the backlight brightness that I was talking about, Turn, determine how quickly the display powers off if you're away from the bike, uh, change the, the temperature readout from like Fahrenheit to Celsius. There's all kinds of stuff. And when you're done, you just double tap that I button again and you're back to uh, back to square one. So there's one more thing about this display that's pretty unique. It has a USB charging port built into the size. This is a full size type A. So really easy to plug right in. Maybe you're someone who's using your phone for GPS or you've got a little portable speaker, some of the Bluetooth things or an additional light or you've got something up here, maybe like a tablet. You're going to the beach, you're gonna read the news or something. You can plug right in and charge off that battery pack. So it's just, again, fully feature complete. It rides very nicely. I think the price is actually pretty good. I feel like these are awesome and I appreciate you introducing me to them, Mark, because yeah. I'd never heard of this company. Absolutely. Okay, guys, I like to take us up to the highest level of assist for these demos.
pretty responsive and surprisingly quiet considering how much power this thing can actually deliver. The display is pretty easy to read even though it's very bright out. These monochrome displays do a pretty good job. And then that's what I'm talking about. There's no speed wobble. The bike is tracking really nicely and partially because of those, those larger wheels and like slightly wider tires, you end up with a better contact patch and a lower attack angle. Just gonna take us up onto the sidewalk here for a minute. See if you can hear any of the rattling when we go off road. Extremely quiet. Extremely quiet for a bike with fenders. I'm very impressed. Very responsive. Easy to stop. Well, relatively easy. Again, these are 160 millimeter hydraulic disc brakes. You could go up to 180, but then they can get bent a little easier, especially at bike racks and stuff. So, you know, having the three finger levers, I think they've, they've done a really good job. Hey buddy. Hey. <laughs> Maybe, we going up this street? You wanna continue yeah. on? Yeah. I'll get some shots of you. Do it. Nice. One thing I'm not completely sure on is the uh, motor RPM support. Like, it seems like it's supporting me at pretty high cadence. I'm just gonna test this. I'm guessing it's closer to like 110, maybe 120. This is something I test on these higher performance mountain bikes and stuff. Overall, I mean, the bike is working really great. So the walk mode's actually pretty capable. We got these very steep steps leading back to the shop down there. Hey, Brandon. Um, I'm gonna use that to climb. Mark's got the camera. So you just activate the bike, make sure it's turned on. You hold the minus button here, like that. I mean, the bike's heavy, it's like a 60 pound bike. That was way, way easier than lifting it up. So if you have kind of a basement or something like that, it was only a few steps, but the walk mode actually works. So again, all you have to do is press that minus button. And when you do, you see it says walk right there on the display. So very cool feature. Well, Mark's taking us on a little tour here through the flower streets of Corona Del Mar, and I'm already starting to see some of the flowers. Yeah, correct. You can head up and just do a little loop or something. Yeah, let's do it. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, beautiful. You know, Southern California, it's just got such a nice kind of a fauna opportunity, especially if you've got the a yard for it like this. This is really beautiful. So if we go through here. Okay. Yeah, then we have all. Oh, wow. Yeah, they call it the Flower Street. This is Poppy. Uh, oh, because the streets are named after flowers. Correct. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. you have Poinsettia, you have Poppy, you have Orchid, Narcissus, you have, you know, all these flower streets as they call them. So it's a beautiful, beautiful community. Wow. I'm a big fan of the like extra large bell that they've got here. And you know, the trigger shifters are, they're kind of my favorite. I'm a bigger fan of those than the twist grip kind of shifters. It's got that optical view window. I like that. And then you'll notice the basket up there again, 10 kilograms, like 22 pounds. It doesn't turn when I turn the bike but the headlight does because it's mounted to the fork. So I just feel like they've, they've set this up really well by not allowing the basket to turn because it's attached to the frame. You're able to load it up more. It doesn't impact steering. The bike actually, it's actually pretty steady. I mean, I'm riding with no hands right now and it's, it's doing well. These are 28 inch by two inch tires. They give you a little bit of extra comfort and air volume, which I like, and 28 inches lowers the attack angle. It's a good setup, the nice gull wing, swept back handlebar. 
200 millimeter stem that can be angled up and back. And then two frame sizes, I mean, you really have a lot of options on these bikes to get them to fit right, and multiple colors. Okay, wow. So then this is the really steep section. I'm in the highest level of assist. I, I went down to a lower gear and try to climb this thing. You know, I can kind of, I can stop if I need to and then start pedaling again. And that 80 Newton meters of torque is really, really quite, quite good. Nice, you want to go back up to the top, Mark? Do it, yeah, you in a good gear? I am, yeah. I, I lowered the gears before I turned around. But if you are someone who forgot to shift that internal eight speed Shimano Alphine, you can shift at standstill, which is really nice. You might need to rock the bike back and forth a little bit or kind of move it, but it, it will click into gear a lot easier than a cassette. Yeah, this is very steep too. So this is a really good indication of like how well these bikes do on hills. Yeah, this is extremely steep and it smells great. Got the nice flowers and stuff. Well guys, I think that is about it. That is the Blue Jay Premier Edition. Thank you so much for the extra help here, Mark. It's You're been welcome. a real pleasure just cruising around this area. Absolutely. Just beautiful weather and Houses. a bunch of really nice stuff. If you ever get the chance to come here, uh, I'd highly recommend it. As usual, I have all the measurements. Mark helped me out with that. You know, we weighed it, we did the length, the width, the height everything back at electricbikereview.com. I also have a comparison tool, so you could look at bikes that are maybe priced a little bit differently and determine you know, which one has the specs that you really need. There's also a forum, and you can get those deeper insights that maybe we missed or you know, they have emerged with future models and stuff. I try to cover as many cool electric bikes as I can. We don't quite get to all of them, uh, but I do love you guys. I hope you have fun out there. Ride safe, and we'll see you in the next one. See ya.